Palestine, the Israeli regime continues its relentless aggressions against the Palestinian people. Authorities registered more than 9,700 killed so far, among them 4,880 children. In Italy, the migration crisis worsens. More than 500 migrants arrived from the island of Lampedusa in the last hours. And in Honduras, heavy rains hit in the nation since Monday affects over 42,000 people so far. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Lesus Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Palestine, the health ministry reported more than 9,717 Palestinians killed in the ongoing Israeli siege of Gaza. According to health ministry figures, some 26,000 people were injured as a result of the Israeli bombardment of the Palestinian territory. Authorities warned that since the beginning of the Israeli attacks on October 7th, some 4,880 children have been killed. The Israeli attacks on Gaza have continued uninterrupted since the beginning of October, despite calls by world nations for a humanitarian ceasefire to allow the evacuation and treatment of wounded civilians in the territory. On Sunday, at least four Palestinians were killed by Israeli forces during attacks in several cities in the occupied West Bank. Hundreds held a funeral procession following the killing of by Israeli forces of three young men in the town of Abu Dis, east of occupied Jerusalem. Earlier, a large contingent of the occupation army stormed the area and laid siege to a house, leading to clashes in which also six Palestinians were wounded, two of them seriously. On the other hand, the Israeli repression left another young man killed in the city of Nuba, northwest of Hebron, while on the same day a minor died of wounds inflicted days earlier in the town of al Esarilla. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, 152 people were killed by Israel in the occupied West Bank since October 7. The situation in Palestine has been deteriorating due to the ongoing Israeli attacks. To have a better understanding of the situation in Gaza in the last three days, here's the report that our correspondent Nur Harassin has prepared for us. The Israeli forces continue their intensive air strikes in northern Gaza and also here in southern Gaza, where they actually ask the people to move and to evacuate for their safety. During the night, the Israeli warplanes targeted a whole block in Al Maghazi uh, refugee camp. According to the Palestinian medical sources, tens were, were killed. The uh, medical sources here at Al Aqsa Hospital did not give us an accurate specific number of the people that were killed because basically the airstrike happened that night and the rescuers and the defense forces they did not manage to rescue uh, all the people under the rubble because of the lack of electricity no lights no bulldozers with fuel so they continue uh, their uh, rescuing in the very early hours of the uh, morning same thing happened in Gaza City when the Israeli warplanes targeted uh, Abu Hasira home also tens were killed but again this um, uh, air strike happened that night meaning that the rescuers did not manage to do their uh, full job Israel is now intensifying its uh, strikes on the Gaza Strip specifically during the night on hospitals on schools on residential homes at the same time they are attacking water tanks that are serving thousands of people so yes aid is coming into the Gaza Strip however Israel is tightening the siege on the Gaza Strip and making the people even more in dire need Nur Harazin Tilisur Gaza the president of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, had a meeting in Ramallah with the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. During the meeting, the Palestinian president called for the immediate cessation of the Israeli siege against the Gaza Strip and called for the delivery of humanitarian aid to treat the wounded. Abbas recalled that the Gaza Strip is an integral part of the state of Palestine, whose legitimate representative is the Palestinian Liberation Organization. The Palestinian president also rejected any aggression against this territory and called for a diplomatic solution to the conflict. Blinken arrived in the West Bank as part of a tour of the region that took him to visit Jordan and meet with the foreign ministers of several Arab nations.
In Ramallah, citizens took to the streets to reject U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit. Demonstrators affirmed that Blinken is not welcome in Palestine since he is an ally of Israel in the crimes committed by the occupation in Gaza. Protesters renewed their demand for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. In Israel, citizens held protests against Benjamin Netanyahu's government, demanding his resignation amidst war crimes against the Palestinian people. Demonstrators gathered in the vicinity of the Prime Minister's private residence. The rally was repressed by police forces. Participants demanded the release of the kidnapped Israeli citizens and rejected the unwillingness of the Tel Aviv government to negotiate their release. Demonstrators also denounced that the far-right Netanyahu government is covering up the real reasons for the violence against the Palestinian people from the Israeli citizens. In a world where solidarity knows no boundaries, cities across the globe are coming together to show their unwavering support for the Palestinian cause. From bustling metropolises to peaceful towns, people took to the streets raising their voices and standing in unity with Palestine. Today has been marked by protests, march and seminars in more than 100 cities around the world, such as Brasilia in Brazil, Barcelona in Spain and Santiago de Chile. The initiative is from the Arab and Palestinian communities and about 150 popular and social organizations that have signed a manifesto of solidarity with Palestine. In Spain, about a thousand people remonstrated this afternoon in the center of Barcelona in solidarity with the Palestinian people and against the bombings in Gaza. Among the banners carried out by demonstrators, one could read slogans such as Long live the Palestinian resistance, Palestinian freedom, or if you are going to make thousands of protests to show the world that bombing children is not right, then you should realize that we have failed humanity. Meanwhile, thousands of people marched today in Santiago de Chile to demand an end to the genocide perpetrated by Israel against the population in the Gaza Strip, as well as the end of the occupation of the Palestinian territories. Palestinians and Chileans living here raised their voices to demand the severance of diplomatic, commercial and military relations with the State of Israel. Brazil is also part of the international initiative in support of the Palestinian people. Thousands of people have occupied streets today in at least 13 cities in the regions of Brazil, especially in Brasilia, in solidarity with the Palestinian people who are facing an unprecedented military offensive by Israel. In the midst of a challenging situation, the people of Palestine continue to demonstrate unwavering resilience and hope. Despite being displaced from their homes and being victims of ruthless attacks for nearly a month, they refuse to let their hopes and aspirations disappear. Our special collaborator, Mohammed El Saife, has testimonies from a displaced woman in Palestine. Let's see. When the bombing started here, it was a warning bombing. We went out, and half way there I remember the birds. I went back and looked for them. I was not afraid of the bombs. I looked for the birds and I came. They live with me. I sleep near them. They eat what I eat. I go out and look for food for them. Under the attacks, I look for food for them. Being in the hospital, I have the birds with me. I feed them as part of everything. I don't abandon them. As you can see, we are here in the palace of Sheikh Sayed. I moved from here to Nasser Hospital. I have been here for 21 days. It's been a devastating war. In this war, where your enemy bombs you. We gave many martyrs. It is an unworthy life. There is no water, no bread, no electricity. We have nothing. Life here is very hard, very difficult. But we always thank God. We are resisting. The whole world abandoned us. We are alone in this. Let's take now a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesuri English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back from the south. In Italy, a fishing boat arrived over the coast of the island of Lampedusa carrying more than 500 migrants. The boat located by the Coast Guard was carrying a total of 531, mig 531 migrants, mostly from Syria, Egypt, Pakistan and Bangladesh. 
they declared that they had to pay between four and seven thousand dollars to make the trip, which set sail from Suara in Libya. With these, there are now four fishing boats with migrants arriving in Italy in the last two weeks. Approximately 2,000 migrants have died between January and September 2023 crossing the Mediterranean Sea, according to the International Organization for Migration. In Russia, an expo showcasing the country's achievements opened on Saturday. The expo occupies a vast exposition ground in northern Moscow built under Stalin and renowned for its collection of elaborate so-called Soviet Gothic-style pavilions. It will remain open through the month leading to the coming presidential elections next March, in which current President Vladimir Putin is expected to take part. Putin has led Russia alternating as either president or prime minister since 2000. If re-elected, this would extend his term until 2030. Thematically, the exposition focuses on Russia as a country of diverse ethnic groups and cultures unified by a sense of national purpose. The Brazilian government approved a support plan against organized crime in the states of Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. President Luiz Inácio da Silva signed a decree establishing the creation of an integrated operation to combat organized crime, specifically for the port of Rio de Janeiro, Port of Santos, Port of Itaguai, Galileo Airport and Guarulhos Airport. Established there will be an integrated monitoring committee for security actions coordinated by the justice and defense authorities with the help of the federal police and the Rio civil police to suppress the militia and drug trafficking. The two portfolios are to present a plan to modernize the actions of the aeronautics and navy with the aim of improving the operations at ports, airports and borders. In Venezuela, a recent survey by the pollster Data Viva revealed that more than 63% of the population in the nation would vote for the ruling party's candidate over the opposition and independent candidates. The study carried out for the 2024 elections indicates that only 3% of those consulted participated in the opposition primaries. Compared to 80% who did not participate, it also indicates that the United Socialist Party of Venezuela remains the country's leading political force above the opposition and independent parties. We now go to Chile. The Pan American Games continue. We are joined by Eduardo Reconesi. Hello, Eduardo. What's new there in Santiago? What can you tell us of today? Hello, good afternoon. How are you doing? A very hot afternoon here in Santiago. The last day of this Pan American actions here in Santiago, Chile. It seems so, so far away around three weeks ago when we started this coverage for, for you guys. It seemed far. But the day is here, everything good comes to an end, and Santiago 2023 is wrapping up today. There's a handful of events happening right now, mainly uh, BMX right beh behind me. Golf is also happening, also speed skating was going on this morning, but most of these events are already done or in the final stages. In the next couple of minutes, the next couple of hours, everything's going to be done and everything's going to be ready for what's going to happen tonight, the big closing ceremony that's going to be happening later on tonight. Yesterday was an action-packed day. We had our teams um, all around Santiago covering the diff different sports and we prepared the following story for you guys. Let's check it out. Santiago 2023 is wrapping up and lots of sports disciplines are coming to an end. During Friday night, Mexico was able to obtain the gold medal defeating Chile in female football. while Argentina defeated Chile on male field hockey. Saturday morning was filled with action in wrestling, with a good performance by the Cuban delegation. During the afternoon, Cuba delivered, winning four gold medals. In athletics, Cuba obtained a gold medal in the 800-meter race on the women's side, while Venezuela did it on the men's side. On Sunday, there will be finals in BMX freestyle, speed skating, and table tennis. 
Reporting from Santiago, Chile for Deportes Telesur, Bastián Merino and Eduardo Reconesi. Al aire, estás al aire. As we said, uh, right now there's a few events going on. One of those is BMX freestyle category. It's happening right behind me. Right now the women's just finished where United States got the gold. The Chilean Maca Perez got the silver medal and Catherine Diaz from Venezuela got the bronze medal. That was that happened just a minute ago. And now the men's are carrying on on the final on the freestyle BMX. BMX, we know it's a new sport. It was first introduced introduced in Lima 2019. It was later part of the Olympic Games in Tokyo. And it's the second time here in Santiago 2023. And it's gonna be on the 2024 Olympics in Paris as well. So it's a new sport, a lot of young players and a lot of crowd. As I told you, it's a very, very hot day, a warm day here in Chile. But still, a lot of crowds showed up here to the National Stadium to see what happened, what, one of the last events that are going to be happening today. Let's talk about a little bit of what happened yesterday with Argentina. We talked about Argentina earlier on, during the week. They were not doing very well. They had difficult here in Santiago 23-3. But yesterday was a golden day for Argentina. They won nine different goals. We want to highlight they defeated the United States in hockey. They defeated Brazil in handball. They did the same with Venezuela in basketball, Chile in rugby. So Argentina um, stepping it up at the end of these Pan American Games and they moved up uh, a lot uh, further on the table. They passed Chile and they're in the top 10 right now. So very good day for Argentina. It was also a very good day for Colombia on speed skating today. And we're going to have all the details for you guys on later editions. We're going to remain here. We're going to go to the BMX on the men's side to see who's going to be one of the last winners of the gold medal here at the Pan Americans 2023 and what has been a uh, very, very long, but very, very exciting and very, very fun week for everybody here in Santiago. That is all from now. I'll go back with you guys in the studio. Thank you, Eduardo, as always, for the latest information on what is happening on the last day of the Pan American Games. We're going to take now a second short break, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you'll be able to re-watch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back from the South. The government of Rwanda announced that it would allow visa-free travel to the country for African citizens in order to promote the free movement of people and trade. The president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, made the announcement during the 23rd summit of the World Travel and Tourism Council while highlighting the potential of Africa as a unified tourist destination for a continent that still depends on 60% of its tourists from outside Africa, according to United Nations data. Kagame specified that any African will be able to take a plane to Rwanda whenever he or she wishes and would not have to pay anything to enter Kigali. Once the measure is implemented, Rwanda will become the fourth African country to eliminate travel restrictions for Africans. In China, the sixth international import expo began with the presence of more than 3,400 exhibitors and almost 400,000 visitors. The expo will run until November 5th. Representatives from 154 countries, regions and international organizations are attending the event, which is held in Shanghai. During the inauguration, the Chinese Premier Li Qian indicated that the Asian giant will continue on its path towards reform and openness with the objective of creating opportunities for cooperation beneficial to all. He also called for the promotion of world economic stability and recovery, emphasizing the need for international financial reform. Cuban Prime Minister Manuel Marrero met with his Chinese counterpart Li Qian to strengthen ties and sign bilateral cooperation agreements. Li pointed out that the consensus reached between Presidents Xi Jinping and Miguel Díaz-Canel regarding the construction of a Chinese-Cuban community with a shared future is a choice in line with the fundamental interests of both nations. For his part, Manuel Marrero indicated that Cuba is willing to work with the Asian China to implement the important consensus reached by the leaders of both countries. 
The agreements signed cover various sectors such as biotechnology, agri-food, transport and digital television. In Honduras, over 42,000 people have been affected by the heavy rains that have been hitting the country since last Monday. According to an official report, two people have died, two are missing, and there are over 42,000 people that have been affected one way or another. Moreover, several communities in the north have been cut off. Therefore, the authorities have implemented an evacuation plan for the areas at risk to transfer inhabitants to shelters. Meanwhile, the Honduran Risk and Emergency Management Department says it will continue to monitor the situation and urge the people to follow their announcements. In Brazil, at least three people died on Friday due to events, due to events caused by heavy rains in the state of Sao Paulo. The state civil defense reported the death of two people in the city of Osasco and Santo André and a third in Pracava, all victims of collapsed walls. The rains were accompanied by winds that reached speeds of more than 100 km per hour, causing the fall of 100 trees and 46 landslides. The regional government indicated that the fire department attended around 800 emergency calls, reporting failures in the electric service in several localities of the area. Indian authorities are on alert due to the severe fog that remains in the country in, and that they qualify as worrisome. According to the Central Pollution Control Board, the pollution level reaches 440, being 50 the ideal healthy index. index. For this reason, an emergency meeting was held in which the local government proposed the implementation of a long term, including the temporary suspension of construction. In this context, authorities urge the population to stay at home and if they have to move around to do it by public transport to reduce emissions. And we have come to the end of this news brief. Before saying goodbye, we want to thank our Caribbean audience, especially the audience of Trinidad and Tobago. We are pleased to share our newscast and contribute to provide an alternative news source of the latest world events. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net and you can also join us on our social medias on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.